So Swift GPI is really about providing that new platform. It is a better experience. And what we would like to do is to stimulate more creativity on the edges with APIs, integrate that into the applications so that we can activate even more value for the end customer, which is the corporate treasurer. And how do we do that? Well, Swift GPI is really that platform. What we've done for the first time in 40 years is something really exciting. We have included a unique end-to-end -end transaction reference in each payment going over the Swift network. So now you can track and trace a payment. And not only that, because you may say, aha, that's like the DHL of payments. Yes, but actually it's better than DHL. Because DHL comes to your door, says, ding dong, here is the package, they scan and they leave, all right? Well, what we do here is we deliver the payment or banks deliver the payment to the other bank, but that bank then processes the payment, credits the account, and updates a tracker that we developed running in the cloud, accessible through APIs. So that's like the DHL experience, here is the package, but then you open the package, you look at the T-shirt, and you say, that's the T-shirt I ordered. So actually, what banks are doing here with GPI is providing an even better experience, really end-to-end, -end, giving confirmation of credit to the initiating buyer, to the sender of that package of that payment. So that's quite uh, an innovation in the core. Uh, this is the core business of banks today. It's the core business of Swift. This is really creating um, a better experience, turbocharging the platform, the engine that Swift provides as a supporting mechanism for these uh, global transactions, for these global payments. On top of that, as you see, we don't stop there. So we develop additional uh, rich data that could be accompanied with the payment. So now that we have this tracking information, you can do all kinds of exciting things using that UETR, using that unique end-to-end -end transaction reference. You can attach rich data, so like a secure Dropbox. And that's important because sometimes if you have an invoice to pay, that's fine. You put the reference number, but sometimes you need to pay multiple invoices. So then you need to provide richer data. Other times it can be there is some data missing. So lots of requests go back to the initiating bank, give me more data. RFI, it's called, request for information. Big burden in compliance. How can we make that better? How can we facilitate that? Another example, now that we know where the payment is, is a stop and recall function. Because today, if you need to stop a payment because of fraud or error, the request for cancellation is actually chasing the payment because the payment is already on its way. You're trying to catch up and say, well, stop this payment. Today, not so efficient. But now we know where the payment is. We can shoot a request for cancellation directly to the bank where the payment is and even put a stop on the network. So a much more efficient way to help in case of fraud or help in case uh, there was a mistake and the payment needs to be revoked. So all kind of new exciting ideas. And what we would like to do is to stimulate um, together with the FinTech community, the whole ecosystem of FinTech stimulate even more co-creation, more value added on the edge that leverage this new exciting platform using APIs. There you go, I use the word exciting. Fundamentally exciting. Uh, and I think it is. Um, and I'm not here alone to bring that story to you. Uh, I'm doing this here with my two friends, uh, winners from the FinTech Challenge, uh, who will talk about the overlay services. So you see the box, it's a big box, and we want this box to be big, because I think there's so many um, exciting opportunities out there um, for co-creation. Uh, and that's really the message today. Uh, we want to provide this new platform on top of which we can co-create, on top of which we can stimulate this creative, this collaborative innovation. That's really the message I wanted to bring, um, of course, uh, my friends will talk more about their ideas, their companies, um, but of course we are here uh, the rest of the day to continue the conversation. 
So come and see us afterwards. Come and see us on the stand or in the various sessions. We have an engagement program as well through Inner Tribe to continue the dialogue with the fintech ecosystem. So that was my message in short. Good morning, my name is James Higgins and I'm the product director at Access Pay. We're a UK fintech based in Manchester and we're in the business of providing and building software solutions for our customers who are both corporates and the banking community. And we build those solutions around a couple of key themes around connectivity, so allowing a corporate to connect to its multi-bank portfolio to make payments, scalability and efficiency, making it really easy to do so, transformation, ensuring that whatever payment formats they send to us, when it reaches the bank, it's going to straight through process because we do a process of transformation. On the cash management side, then, we provide multi-bank cash visibility. We provide intraday liquidity reporting and forecasting. So we were very aware of SWIFT's GPI initiative and very excited by the prospect of using some of the GPI functionality to provide additional value to our customers. So when the opportunity to participate in the industry challenge arose, then it was far too good to, to pass up, and we were fortunate enough to be selected to go out to Singapore. So some six weeks or so ago, myself and, and our CEO, Anish, landed in Singapore with a suitcase full of fantastic ideas of overlay services we were going to build. Um, interestingly, the overlay service that we're actually going to move forward with bears little resemblance to any of those ideas that we arrived with. And that's a great news story, actually, because it's different than our original preconceptions because we had the opportunity through this fantastic three-day process of co-collaboration with both SWIFT and the banking community to, to not only understand from SWIFT the art of the possible and what could be done with GPI, but from the banks as well, what the real challenges were that they're seeing from their customers. And allied with the research and the, the information that we're getting from our own base of over 500 corporate customers, we think what we've ended up with is a value proposition which solves problems not just for the corporates and our, our existing customers, but for the banking community as well. So what is that solution? Well, the problem that we're trying to solve, so Access Pay is in the business right now of, on the cash management side, solving a problem for the corporate treasurer around real-time visibility of your multi-bank uh, cash positions. So we said, well, GPI, this, this fantastic source of really rich data, can enhance that for the corporate treasurer because for the, the GPI tracker right now provides the banking community with a, a, a view of a remittance and where it is in the, tr the chain. But actually, to the corporate, what's really valuable to them is what am I going to get today? What is coming in? What receivables am, am I going to be getting? And, and whilst some of you in the banking sector may say, well, th these kind of tools exist in the form of pre-advices, et cetera, the data is not rich enough to provide reliable prediction and forecasting to the corporate. So our solution is that we are going to surface some of the rich GPI data to that corporate um, via polling of the GPI banks, and we're going to give them accurate and, and reliable information on the receivables that are coming to them, allowing to the, them to forecast in advance their end-of-day liquidity position. And we're going to do this by showing them not just the receivables that have been remitted, but when they've fallen over and they're no longer going to be received on the, the original intended value date. We're going to show them charges that have been deducted, FX rates that have been applied to corporate payments. Now, sure, the banks could go and build these types of solutions, we, we, we acknowledge. But the benefit of doing it this way and building these overlay services using an organization like Access Pay is that we can do it standard. We can build a standard solution which aggregates this information across a corporate's portfolio of multiple banks. As we go through this process, how we're going to do it is we're proposing to rapidly prototype three, four, five, six different versions of this solution and offer it to the banks and say, go and give this to your customers. Let them look at it. Let them use it and give us feedback on what is resonating and what's not. And what we're going to end up with, hopefully, is a solution that the corporate can rely on to be bank agnostic in the sense that they don't have to pull information together from 16 different bank portals in order to get this forecasted position, in order to get this site of their intraday liquidity. Um, so that, that process of standardization is really going to um, play in the area that we're already in. So why work with us? Why do we want GPI banks to come on this journey with us? We, we've got experience in cash forecasting, intraday liquidity visibility, but we need your input and your insight. We want your customers' insights as well as, as, well as our own to make sure this, this overlay service is truly delivering the best possible value. If we do it on this basis, 
spend. There's no upfront cost to the bank. We've got experience in connectivity for the corporates, and so this information can be delivered back to the corporates direct into their ERP or TMS, whatever system is, is, is the one that they want to work in. So we're playing on back to those, those key points around connectivity, efficiency, scalability, and real-time information is really the area that we, want to, that we want to work in. So we're starting this proof of value, and I've talked a little bit through the solution. We're going to go through for three months. And if you want to come on the journey with us, then as I say, we all develop prototypes on a weekly basis for the banks. Um, and all that we ask is, we, is that we continue the great process of co-collaboration that we started at the Industry Challenge. And that what we, we're going to end up with is a fantastic product for the bank, for the corporates rather. But also, once we've got this solution, imagine what you as a bank can do with an aggregated view of all your customers' receivables, accurate information as to what's going to be received and when. The rolled up version of that can also talk to you, the banking community, around increasing transparency around your intraday liquidity flows. And so it comes right back to my, my original point. We think that what we're doing here in this process is really solving a problem for the corporates, but also for the banks as well. And so if you'd like to hear more, then Access Pay will be available um, for the rest of uh, Cybos, and, and we'd love to have a chat about our solution. Um, and the, the GPI journey that we're going on with this overlay service. My name's Simon Jones, and I am the CTO and uh, one of the founders of Assembly Payments. Assembly Payments uh, provides uh, payment solutions to uh, marketplaces and platforms. So think lots of buyers, lots of sellers. We provide merchant facilities. We provide services like uh, digital wallets, escrow services, uh, fraud protection, uh, so a number of services uh, to uh, marketplaces. Um, in addition to that, over the last 12 months, uh, we've been uh, providing those same services to banks. Uh, so as we've been able to provide these services to marketplaces, we've actually overlaid uh, our service on top of bank services. And so banks have come to us and said, um, can we actually provide those services to our customers? And, uh, and we said, sure. Uh, we can provide those very same APIs uh, to your banking customers uh, and uh, provide those as uh, a white-labeled API. Now, we, um, we were very uh, lucky to uh, be selected to uh, attend the uh, SWIFT Industry uh, Challenge in Singapore. Uh, it was a fantastic event, uh, three days of uh, co-collaboration uh, with banks uh, and uh, trying to understand uh, some of their problems and also some of their corporate customers' problems. Um, it was a privilege to, uh, to work through some of those problems. And uh, what, we, uh, what they told us uh, they, their customers were uh, encountering were things like um, uh, issues with cross-border uh, payments, uh, things like um, human error. Uh, where uh, people were putting uh, incorrect amount or incorrect bank details in, and uh, those, uh, those details uh, resulted in funds being transferred uh, to the wrong account. Um, they also told us uh, that they were seeing uh, large amounts of email fraud. So uh, they were seeing uh, potentially uh, you know, huge uh, instances of fraud uh, in the US alone, uh, $5.3 billion in fraud last year um, from email fraud. And that's where uh, a fraudulent actor will actually um, update uh, an invoice with their own uh, bank details, and they'll send those, uh, those details through uh, via email, and those funds will be uh, trans transferred to the wrong account. Um, they also told us that uh, reconciliation was difficult. Um, while Swift GPI provides that rich data and uh, that, st that status tracker, um, there was also a, a disconnect between the uh, request for payment and the actual um, rec receiving of that payment, and it was difficult for them to reconcile that information. And so together we came up with a solution called Request to Pay. And request to pay, uh, like the name says, allows a corporate to initiate a request um, for payment. The, uh, 
they can provide information like their uh, company details, uh, terms of trade, uh, they can provide an invoice or other um, uh, agreement information. And the request for pay is transferred over the SWIFT GPI message service uh, to the recipient, their customer, that uh, is going to then uh, ultimately make the payment. The, uh, the, their customer is able to verify the details uh, within their internet banking portal. Um, they are able to see the invoice, uh, verify that uh, those details are correct, uh, and then initiate payment. And so this means that uh, human error is taken out of the equation. Uh, it also means that it's a, a closed loop, so you're not going to be sending uh, e emails with invoices around. Uh, and one of the other great things is that uh, it also ties the, the uh, reconciliation back to the original request for payment. So you're able to see, uh, you know, using the UETR that we mentioned before, uh, you're able to generate that UETR uh, right up front, and then that follows through with the request uh, through to the actual initiation of the payment and then all the way back. And then as those funds are settled, um, that uh, reconciliation is a whole lot easier. You're able to reconcile using that, uh, that same reference. So the, um, the next phase for us is uh, to actually do a proof of value. And uh, we've uh, identified three phases that uh, we would like some uh, uh, you know, collaboration with banks and their customers on. Uh, that is, so uh, the first phase is around a concept. Um, you know, have we actually uh, got the right solution for the market? Uh, so identifying uh, things like the, um, the requirements, user stories, user cases, that sort of thing. Uh, and then phase two is moving into a more of a feasibility uh, study and feasibility analysis. Um, so we're looking at, uh, is it technically feasible? What data needs to be stored where in order to be able to do this? Um, is there a cost model um, that's going to work for the banks and, uh, and SWIFT and assembly? And then um, the third phase is around validation. So we're going to build some uh, wireframe demos, uh, take that to the banks such that we're you know, able to validate those use cases and, uh, and confirm that, uh, yes, we do have a product fit for market um, and that it's a, you know, a service that can be delivered over the top of the SWIFT GPI uh, services as a, as a true overlay.